Hi, welcome to Dimensional Analysis Part 3. My name is Dr. English, and today understanding numbers with multiple units is going to be our primary goal. Going over the dimensional analysis rules one more time, talking about briefly what is an exact number, and looking at practice problems 1, 2, and 3. So first of all, let's look at some situations where you might see a number with multiple units that you already might be familiar with. For example, this one right here meters per second. So this little line right here means per. And where we might see that is in the situation like speed of light. If you're monitoring the amount of water that you're using in your house, you might look at gallons per minute. If I was going for a drive with my family in Canada, I would be converting from miles per hour into kilometers per hour. And finally, we see this example down here, which is in units per milliliter, which is commonly used on medication packages. One more time, the rules for dimensional analysis. Number one, write everything out neatly and make sure that you're writing down the correct number and the correct units. That's somewhat key to start with the correct information. Two, in my world, I ask my students to draw a multiplication sign and a line. Make sure that you're working with the correct conversion factors factor or factors, and make sure that you have the proper units on top and on the bottom. Make sure that you can cancel the appropriate units. And we're going to see that we're going to have to go in two different directions when we work with multiple units today. Finally, complete the calculations using the proper math and correct final units. And one more time, ask yourself, does it make sense? Because if it doesn't make sense, what are you doing? You gotta go back, you gotta visualize what you're working with, you've gotta just make sure that everything that you're doing makes sense. Absolutely key. Before we move on, let's just talk about what is an exact number. When you work with these problems, you have a given, and the given is typically a measurement. All the conversion factors afterwards can be considered an exact number. So an exact number are numbers that are defined or result from a count. Now you might ask, what is that? Well, I could say I have 26 students in my classroom, or there is 12 bagels in a dozen. That would be resulting from a count. I could count that out, I could see it, it's defined. These are different than numbers that result from a measurement because measurement is gonna have some type of uncertainty with it. So an exact number has no uncertainty and cannot be simplified. So some examples down here of exact numbers are conversions that we've seen before. 1,000 milliliters in a liter, a pound is 16 ounces, one inch is 2.54 centimeters. So why do you care? You care about this because you're gonna be given all these numbers and if you're working with significant figures, you might say to yourself, well, how do these conversion factors play into the whole idea of significant figures at the end? So if you look right here, it says when determining the significant figures in an answer, use only the given, the original number that's given to you as a reference. All other numbers involved in the conversion factor are exact and will not influence the significant figures in the final answer. So again, when you're calculating that final number and how many significant figures that you have, don't worry about the conversion factors that you've been using, only look at your given. So let's look at an example here. A car averages about 32 miles per gallon. Convert this into kilometers per liter. When I start this, the first thing that I'm always going to do is to write out my given. So I'm going to say 32.0 miles over one gallon because that's what this means miles per assumed one gallon that's how this given is being set up I'm going to put a multiplication sign and a line the next thing that I need to consider is what do I want to convert first I'm going from miles per gallon into kilometers per liter I think I'm going to start with miles, going from miles to kilometers. So in order to do that, I need a conversion. Here's one. One mile is equal to 1.6093 kilometers. So now you might say, well, how am I going to set this up? What's going to go on the top and what's going to go on the bottom? So I want to be able to cancel down and to the right if I'm starting with the unit on the top, the numerator. So I want to be able to cancel miles. So I'm going to put one mile on the bottom and I'm going to put the kilometers on the top. So 1.6093 
thermometers. Excellent. And then I ask myself, can I cancel down into the right? Are my units going to cancel? So miles cancel miles. I'm left with kilometers. So kilometers is taken care of. Now I need to go from gallons into liters. So I'm going to put another multiplication sign and another line. With these conversion factors, what you really need to remember is that anything over itself is going to cancel out. It's going to equal one. So really what I want to see here to get rid of gallons is I want to see gallons on the top and gallons on the bottom. I already have gallons on the bottom. So here's my next conversion factor. One gallon is equal to 3.78541 liters. Why am I writing out all these numbers? Because I don't want to drop anything. I'll round at the end. I'll look at my significant figures. I'll deal with that later. So one gallon is on the bottom. I need one gallon at the top in order for gallons to cancel out. So one gallon on the top and 3.78541 liters. That's all good. So now can I cancel? Well, gallons, cancel, gallons, and I'm left with liters. And liters is what I want at the end. They want kilometers per liter. Here's my kilometers on top. Here's my liters on the bottom. So I'm going to put my equal sign. So the math that I'm going to do here is 32 times 1.6093 times 1 divided by the multiplication of 1 times 1 times 3.78541. So if I do this, my final answer for this whole thing, 13.6042 kilometers per one liter. So now how can I simplify this? Well, I go back to my original up here and I say, how many significant figures am I starting with? And because the decimal is present, the zero is significant. So this would be three sig figs. Three sig figs. So my answer needs to be to three significant figures. So I'm going to keep the one and the three. I'm going to keep the decimal and I'm going to keep the six. Everything after that is not going to be considered significant. So my final answer for this whole thing will be 13.6 kilometers slash meaning per and then liters and that is my final answer. Okay let's look at example number two. Convert 4.70 pounds per cubic foot into grams per milliliter. Alright so we are dealing with pounds per cubic so we gotta bring that into play foot so that's foot cubed into grams per milliliter. Now there's going to be a couple of difference here between the example that we just did and the example that we're doing now. One, you're going to see that we're not going to have straightforward, oh, I'm just going to do one step and I'm going to get into the unit that I want. That's going to be one thing that you're going to see. And the other thing that you're going to see is that we're going to be involving this cubed function right here. So the first thing that I always want to do is write out my given. 4.70 pounds per one foot cubed multiplication sign and a line. Now I've got to choose. Am I going to start with converting pounds over into grams or am I going to start by converting cubic feet over into milliliters? I'm going to work with my pounds first. So I need a conversion unit for that. So one kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. So if I'm starting with pounds, I want pounds on the bottom. Pounds. And that's good. This conversion unit is going to convert me over into kilograms. So kilograms is going to go on top. So for every one kilogram, that is 2.2 pounds, and I know that I've done this correctly if pounds cancels pounds, which is good, but I'm not in grams, and I know from previous examples that we have done that one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. And again, I can look at this and say, can I cancel my units? Kilograms cancel kilograms. I'm left with grams, which is what I want right here. So I'm done with that particular conversion. Let's work with this uh, cubic foot here. So I need to get out of cubic feet and I need to get into milliliters. So what is a conversion unit that I can use? Well, I know that one foot is equal to 12 inches. So I'm going to say one foot cubed 12 inches, 12 inches. That's sort of interesting. 
because I just can't write 12 inches down here. That's not true. But I could put inches cubed. Yes, I could. But if I do inches cubed up here, I'm also going to have to cube the 12. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 12 cubed inches cubed. Awesome. And again, do I have this set up correctly? Can I cancel my units? Well, feet cubed cancels feet cubed. I'm left with inches cubed. I can move on. Multiplication sign and a line. What's my next conversion unit? Ah, one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. Lovely. I'm in inches right here, so I'm going to put one inch on top and 2.54 centimeters on the bottom. But you might be saying, wait a second, that's inches cubed. And yes, you're right. So I'm going to put a cubed up here, and one cubed is still one. That's all good. But 2.54 cubed, well, that's going to be a little different. So I'm going to add in all my cubes there. Multiplication sign and line, jumping a little ahead of myself. Can I cancel again? Inches cubed, inches cubed. I'm left with centimeters cubed. So now what do I need to do? I need one last conversion unit and that is one milliliter is equal to one centimeter cubed. One centimeter cubed is equal to one milliliter. And hey, look, I want milliliters at the end. Excellent. So do my units cancel? Centimeters cubed, centimeters cubed. I have milliliters on the bottom. I have grams up on the top, grams per milliliter. So I've set up everything correctly, and I know I have because I've taken my time. I've written things out neatly. Now all I have to do is the math correctly, which, as you know, can always be a little bit of a challenge. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply 4.70 times 1 times 1,000 times 1 times 1 times 1. Enter, divided by, and then if you're using a graphing calculator, you can put this all in a parentheses, 1 times 2.2 .2 times 1 times 12 cubed times 2.54 cubed times 1 and I'll get my answer 0 0.075 grams per milliliter final example final example and this is sort of a crazy one but hey why not convert 12,000 miles per year to meters per millisecond let's start by writing out our given 12,000, and I'm going to try to write small because it's going to get sort of crazy, miles per one year. Multiplication sign and a line. If I look at this conversion unit, one mile is equal to 1.6093 kilometers. So let's get rid of the miles first. Let's work with that first because we want to get to meters. So if I start with miles, one mile on the bottom, is equal to 1.6093 kilometers. Multiplication, sign, and a line. And I want to get to meters, and I know that in one kilometer there is a thousand meters. Excellent. So, of course, my question to myself is do my units match up? Can I cancel them down into the right? Have I done this correct setup? So, miles cancel miles. Kilometers cancel kilometers, and I'm left with meters, which is what I want on top here. Good. So now let's go from converting years into milliseconds, which is a little bit more interesting. One year, if we consider it a normal year and not a skip year or anything crazy like that, is 365 days. 365 days. And in one day, there is 24 hours, and in one hour, there is 60 minutes, and in one minute, there is 60 seconds, seconds, and in one second, there is 1,000 milliseconds. So have I set up the correct order here will all of my units cancel up and to the right let's check shall we so years cancel years days cancel days 
Hours cancel hours, minutes cancel minutes, seconds cancel seconds. I am left with milliseconds on the bottom, which is what I want. And now all I have to do again is the math. So I'll go through and I'll say 12,000 times 1.6093 times 1,000 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. Enter divided by parentheses again if you're using a graphing calculator. 1 times 1 times 1 times 365 times 24 times 60 times 60 times 1,000. And if I do that all correctly, I will get 6.12 times 10 to the negative 4 meters per millisecond. Or if you want to do it in standard notation, it would be 0.000612 meters per millisecond. And again, this is what shows up in my calculator. This might be represented by an E. Is it to the correct number of significant figures? Actually, it's not. Because if I look to the 12,000 here, that's only two significant figures here. The most correct answer here, considering significant figures, would be 6.1 times 10 to the negative 4 meters per millisecond. And that would be my final answer. Was this one excessive? Of course it was. It does show you how all the conversion factors come together, how we can cancel, how important it is to write neatly and set it up and make sure that you can cancel your new units as you get your final answer. So what did we learn in this tutorial? Well, we looked at situations where you have numbers with multiple units that you might see in everyday life. So done. Review of dimensional analysis rules one more time. We looked at the definition of an exact number and we saw some practice, practice, and more practice, which of course in these situations is always very key. Need more help? Please feel free to contact me. Have a great day.